Hey, this is Mr. Jaynes, and we're going to be talking about the solving linear equations using flowcharts and the undoing method. So hopefully you should have this worksheet right in front of you. I'm going to work through a couple of these, and then please pause the video when I ask you to, so you can work on a few of these yourself. So in this video, we're going to be making using flowcharts to solve one-step and two-step linear equations. Okay? So let me show you how that works. So if you've got an equation like this, x minus 5.4 equals 19.8. First, think about what is happening to that x. What operation is happening to that x? Well, we've got x, and we're taking away, we're subtracting 5.4. So we'll write that there. And we should equal 19.8. So we'll write that there. Now, to figure out what x is, we have to undo this operation right here. We call that using an inverse operation. So what's the inverse of subtraction? It's addition. So we will add 5.4 to our 19.8 and get 25.2. Go ahead and try numbers 2 and 3. Pause the video here and unpause when you're done. Hopefully you've given a try to numbers 2 and 3 and let's look at the solutions. Number 2 should look like this and to get your answer you have 3.5 times 4.6 and you get 16 Point one. For the next one, we have negative 5 minus 9, you should get negative 14. Now before we go on, I want to show you how to write these without using the flowchart, by using just algebra. Go back to, up to the top. Okay, here is our equation written out algebraically. To solve this, we're going to use inverse operations just like we did before. But the rule of equations is that whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other. These are called properties of equality. Now that's a big fancy name. We'll talk about what it means more in class, but basically it means whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. So think about this. What did I do in my flow chart to undo, to get rid of, to cancel out that negative, or that subtract 5.4? I added 5.4. So I'm going to write plus 5.4 to both sides of my equation. In fact, it might be nice to draw a line here plus 5.4. And what happens to my equation? Well, I have the x stays. Nothing happens to that x. I'll bring that down. Negative 5.4 plus 5.4. Well, that just does equal 0. So I don't need to write that in my equation anymore. And then 19.8 plus 5.4. Well, we've already done that. That's over here. It's 25.2. Okay. What I want you to do is pause the video here, and go ahead and try and write out the algebraic steps for problems two and three. Please pause now. All right, so now that we've had enough time to pause, let's take a look at our work. Number two should look like this. You're multiplying both sides by 4.6 to cancel out that divide by 4.6. So if you'd like, you can actually just cross them out like that. And on this side, you're left with x and 3.5 times 4.6 is 16.1. Feel free to use a calculator on that one if you need to. The last one, remember, we have plus 9, so we're subtracting 9 from both sides. The x stays, the 9s get canceled out, and we have x equals 14. Don't forget, for all these problems, to check your work, and, and we check our work by taking our answer and substituting it back into the original problem to make sure that, yes, that value of x does work in this equation. So I can take 25.2 and subtract 5.4. Okay, take out my calculator. Let's see. 25.2 minus 5.4, 19.8, 19.8. Good. Good, good, good. That works out because 19.8 there, 19.8 there. Good. Make sure that you do a check for these two problems, too. If you haven't done a check for two and three, please do that now before going on. Pause the video and do that check. Now that we've done a flowchart, algebra, and a check on the front side, let's take a look at four, five, and six to make sure that we can do those. All right. So we start with x, and, well, now we've got multiple operations here. So you have to ask yourself, what's the first operation that's happening to x? Well, if you remember order of operations, multiplication always comes before addition. So it's x times 3, and then we're adding 4 to get negative 11. 
So you're going to go backwards using inverse operations. The inverse of uh, plus 4 is minus 4. The inverse of times 3 is dividing by 3. Please use the slash instead of the division symbol. So let's see. We start with our uh, 11. Our, sorry, our negative 11. Negative 11. We're going to subtract 4. Okay, we get negative 15. And then we're going to divide that by 3. We get negative 5. Okay, so negative 5 is what x should be. Now before we go on, let's actually write this out algebraically first. If you'd like to, draw this line down the middle there. Now here's how you work here. What's the first thing we're going to undo here? Well, if we look at our flow chart, it's that negative, the, that positive 4. We're going to try and cancel out or undo it with that negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to write subtract 4 on both sides here. Minus 4, minus 4. And over here, plus 4 and negative 4 equals 0. Those are gone, and I'm left with just 3x equals negative 11. Minus 4 is negative 15. All right, that's my first step. My second step is to, well, get rid of this, this 3. So right now it's 3 times x, and so to undo, or to use the inverse, I'm going to divide by 3. Divide both sides by 3, using that fraction symbol. Uh, 3 over 3 equals 1, and 1x is just x. So x equals negative 15 divided by 3 equals negative 5. Perfect, that's what I had over here. Don't forget to check by taking our answer and putting it back into the original equation. Let's see. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Plus 4 is negative 11. Yep, that works out. That is correct. Try pausing the video here and working out 5 and 6. Unpause the video when you think you have it. Right, so here is the flowchart for 5 and 6. Now, I haven't written out the algebra, so I'm going to do that. And if you are having a little bit of trouble, you can watch me as I write out these, these algebraic steps. So I like to draw this line for these. You don't have to, but I prefer to. Um, and let's see what we can do here. Well, I've got a negative 8. And so to, to undo that, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. OK. Those are gone. 2x equals 14 plus 8 is, what is 14 plus 8? Oops, 20, uh, 2. Wow, took me a while. Sorry, guys. Okay, and now I've got 2 times x, just like I had over here. So to undo that, I'm going to divide by 2. Remember, this is called using inverse operations. 22 divided by 2, those are gone. And actually, let's talk about why those go away. Okay, 2 divided by 2, with a fraction 2 over 2, is the same as 1 over 1, which is just... 1. And so this is kind of like having 1x. But 1x is the same as just having x by itself. Think of saying like a, you know, 1 banana or a banana. 1x is the same as just x. So when we divide like that, that's why those cancel each other out. They equal 1, so I can just write x by itself. Anyway, back to the problem. 22 divided by 2 is 11. So the answer is 11. Equals 11. And of course, you should check to make sure that works by plugging it back in. But let's go on and take a look at 6. With 6, let's see, we have to get rid of that, that 12. Okay, well, I'll subtract 12 from both sides. Uh, those are out of there. Negative 2x equals negative 20 minus 12 gives me negative 32. And I divide both sides by negative 2. Because remember, this is negative 2 times x. I'm undoing that. Okay, just like before, I've got x equals, and when I divide those, I get positive 16. And again, you should check that for yourself. On the back side, okay, we've, or on the next paper, we've got some word problems here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to help you identify the unknown and write an equation. All the stuff down here, you're going to do that yourself. Let's start. Kevin bought seven tickets to the haunted graveyard at Lake Compounds for $209.93. How much does one ticket cost? So what's the unknown here? Well, we'll have our unknown be x. What do we know? We don't know, let's underline this, how much one ticket costs. So x will be the cost of one ticket. 
Okay? And my equation, well, let's see here. Kevin bought seven tickets to the graveyard. So, let's see, seven tickets. So that's seven times x, because I'll take the, num the cost of one ticket and multiply it by seven, and what will that equal? What goes on the other side? Well, that's going to equal the total cost, two hundred and nine dollars and ninety-three cents. Okay. Pause the video here and try and solve this equation using both the the flowchart and by coming over here and writing seven x equals two oh nine point nine three and doing the math out yourself. I'm not going to show you the work this time. I'm just going to show the answer. So pause your video before you show your answer. So you should pause. Now. That means you, Jose. Hopefully you got $29.99. Again, I want you to fill in all of this stuff and everything down here and even check it. So please do that yourself. But hopefully you got $29.99. If you're confused, please come see me for some extra help. Eight gets a little more challenging here. It says the Verizon bill charged $18.75 per month for phone service and $8 per minute. Last month, my bill was $33.63. How many minutes did I use? You can probably figure this out yourself that your unknown is going to be the number of minutes. But after that, it's kind of hard to write an equation. Let's see. Whenever I write an equation, I like to think of when we were doing patterns before. What's my starting amount? What's my starting amount? And how much do I grow after that? So it seems like if I got this phone service, I'm going to get charged $18.75 per month. So that means that at the start of that month, I'm just going to get $18.75 no matter how much I use the phone. So that's like my starting amount. Okay. And eight per minute, eight cents per minute, well that sounds like kind of like my my ad each time. So I'm starting with $18.75 per month and I'm adding this amount per minute. So this is going to be my my like my ad each time. Okay, the then. Then add each time this part. Okay, so let's write that out uh, like we did for patterns. So I start with my 1875, and I'm going to add on 0 0.08 cents for every minute, so times x. And once I get my bill, what should that equal? Well, that should equal 33.63, the total amount for that month. Okay, we've got our equation. Now, I'm going to leave it up to you to solve this. Please pause the video before I show you the answer. Pause now. So it turns out I used my phone for 186 minutes that month. And I want you to go back and, like I said, fill in all of this, fill in everything over here, right? But you should end up with 186. And if you don't, come get me for extra help. Now, the last thing we're going to do is take a look at these two problems in the back. What I want you to do is try and write out the unknown and an equation for each one of these and then solve it yourself. If you feel like you can do that, pause now and try it. I'll show you the unknown the equation afterwards, and then you can check your work. Please pause now and try 9 and 10 completely by yourself. So here's your equation. Remember, you bought an iPad for $159, so that's kind of your starting amount. You buy the iPod, you got that $159 to start. But then for each of the 21 songs, you're going to increase per the cost of each song. So that's why it's 21 times x here. If you didn't get this, at least write down the equation and try and solve it now. Okay, so hopefully you tried to pause the video and solve this, and if you did, hopefully you got, drumroll please, 89 cents per song. Okay, again, please make sure you fill in all the stuff yourself. The last one, your school band needs to buy new recording equipment. The equipment will cost $3,000. The band has collected $1,200 from previous fundraisers. If the band sells sandwiches at th five each, how many sandwiches must they sell to raise the remaining funds? Well, this sounds just like one of our patterns. Our starting amount is 1200 plus $5 per sandwich, that's our unknown, has to equal $3,000 at the end. Pause the video here and try and solve this for me. Again, sorry to clarify, this was our equation. Our unknown was number of sandwiches, number of sammies. Um, and hopefully if you solve this out, you're going to get, they need to sell 360 sandwiches. That's a lot of sandwiches. Make sure you fill in all this in yourself, 
and come talk to me if you're confused or if you finished this video.